welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now in this video, we'll take a look at an application called AIS Catcher, which is a multi-platform AIS receiver. Of course, you will need some kind of radio receiver for this to work, but if you don't, then watch to the end to find out how you can use this software without a receiver. Now, if you don't know what AIS is, then let me briefly explain. AIS stands for Automatic Identification System, which transmits a ship's position so that other ships are aware of its position, similar to how ADSB works for aircraft. Now, AIS uses two RF channels in the VHF portion of the spectrum. These are AIS channel 1 on 161.975 MHz and then channel 2 on 162.025 MHz. Now channel 1 is primarily for simplex ship-to-ship -ship transmissions, while channel 2 is duplex for ship-to-shore. Now luckily, AIS Catcher supports many of the popular SDR receivers, such as RTL-SDR, SDR Play, AirSpy, HackRF, RTL-TCP and Spy Server, along with SOAPY SDR and a few others. IF discriminator recordings can also be used for later offline decoding if required, but it's much more fun to receive and decode these transmissions in real time. AIS Catcher is multi-platform with pre-built binaries for Windows, or you can build it yourself with Visual Studio. So yep, yeah, this is open source. Installing on Mac, Linux, Raspberry Pi is also possible with full instructions on how to build and install on the AIS Catcher GitHub page. Now to my surprise, there's also an Android application available, although I've not personally tried this yet, but it makes a great portable AIS receiver just with an Android phone or even an Android tablet. Now AIS Catcher is kind of special. And what I mean by that is that it's an all-in-one application for tracking ships, boats and vessels in real time. In the past, I've experimented with other AIS decoding solutions, which required various pieces of software to be running at the same time. However, with AIS Catcher, everything from the receiver control, the modulator and signal processing is all performed within the application. Viewing the received and decoded AIS data is now even easier as AIS Catcher has an inbuilt web server showing lots of information such as stats, track vessels, and even their location is plotted on a map. Now, AIS Catcher does have the ability to export this data in real time via UDP, JSON, and HTTP. So applications like OpenCPN or sending your data to websites like Marine Tracker is still possible. Let's now take a look at how we download, install, and set up AIS Catcher so that it's running on a Windows computer. Of course, for this to work, you will need to make sure you have your SDR receiver plugged in and working. An antenna which receives VHF is also beneficial, plus living near an active river or coastline. But don't worry if you don't, I'll show you how you can connect to a third party SDR server from around the world later in the video. So head to the GitHub page release section and then download the latest pre-compiled binary archive. Now this will contain all the files needed to run AIS Catcher. Now for the most up-to-date version, I'd recommend to download from the nightly build area. So once downloaded, uncompress the files into a folder and you should see a file structure like this. Now AIS Catcher is actually a command line application with many options that can be added to the initial command. So it's best to use a batch file to start the application. A sample batch file named start is already supplied. So just open this with your notepad text editor to view its contents. The default batch file is configured to output decoded messages to your local host on port 10.11.0, which will be useful for programs like OpenCPM to use. However, what we want to do is append to this command line so that its inbuilt web server is active. So just add dash n8100 and then save the file. Now you can just double click on the start batch file and a terminal window will open and show something like this. 
Now here we can see that AIS Catcher has found my RTL SDR device and will now start to print status logs to the window. Now as I'm not near any ships, boats, vessels whatsoever, mainly being down to the fact that I'm in the center of England, I won't be able to receive any packets here. So there's no point showing you the web interface just yet. However, AIS Catcher has an extraordinary feature that lets it connect to a remote server, such as an AirSpy server. So to demonstrate it working, let's take a look on the AirSpy server map and find a station near the coast, or at least near a river or canal where there may be some vessel activity. Now with the map open, click on one of the green circles that's potentially near a river or the coast. Then down on the left side of the screen, it will show you the details for this server. Now you need to make sure that you find one which covers reception around 160 megahertz. Otherwise you won't receive anything, especially if it's a server designed just for HF. And once you find a suitable AirSpy server, click the copy URL link at the top of the left hand bar. This will copy the server's URL to your clipboard, which we can then paste into the start batch file to tell AIS to connect to it. Now at the end of the command line after the dash N8100, type dash Y and then paste in the URL you copied from the AirSpy server. You'll need to edit this text and remove the SDR colon forward slash forward slash so it's just the IP is shown. You'll also need to remove the colon between the IP address and the port number so there's just the space formatted like this. Save the file and then double click on it to start it running. If successful, you should then start to see lots of messages appearing in the terminal window. If so, you can now load up your web browser and point it to your local host on port 8100 or 127.0.0.1 colon 8100. This will now show the AIS catcher's inbuilt web server front end. Now lots of information is stored and you can easily see a list of stats, received vessels and a lovely looking position map showing all of the received ships. If you have installed the plugins as described in the GitHub page, then you can click on a ship and then click on one of the pop-up links to show further information on that vessel, like a photo or maybe even its current route. So as you can see, this is very similar to ADSB, but instead of aircraft, it's for boats. Unlike ADSB, where we are all most likely able to receive transmissions, AIS Catcher does require you to be near a port, coast or river, so you can receive the transmissions from the vessels directly. Or like shown in this video, you can connect to a remote server somewhere around the world. In fact, you could even install your own server somewhere running on a Raspberry Pi and connected with an RTL SDR and then connect to it yourself. Anyway, guys, if you've used any kind of AIS decoding in the past and you haven't seen this before, let me know down in the comments what you think of it. I think it's a great application that brings AIS decoding into a world of its own. Very simple to use and easy to set up. And especially as it's being multi-platform, it serves everybody in the community. Also, with it being open source, it's nice to be able to see exactly how it's put together. Anyway, until the next video, stay safe, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.